All right, this video we're going to do another example of finding, a, um, in this case, a Taylor series. So again, um, if you took a look at the last vi video, all I'm going to do is calculate basically derivatives. Um, I'm going to evaluate it. I'm going to replace these numbers with actual numbers um, and maybe try to come up with a more compact summation notation version of the function. So in this one we have, um, we're going to find the Taylor series for the function, the natural logarithm of x, and we'll do this at the value a equals 2. So again, the first thing I'm going to do is, well, I just write down my original function, and then I start taking derivatives. So the derivative of ln of x is 1 over x, but I'm just going to write that as x to the negative first, um, just for derivative taking purposes. Um, so it looks like the first derivative, I'll get negative 1x to the negative second. It looks like the third derivative of this is going to turn out to be positive 2x to the negative third. And so it looks like our fourth derivative is going to become negative, and this is where I'm not going to multiply things out, just like I said in the last one. You could write 3 times 2 is 6, but I'm going to write it as 3 times 2. x to the negative fourth. Your fifth derivative, that's going to turn out to be a positive 4 times 3 times 2, x to the negative fifth. And maybe let's do uh, let's do one more. So the sixth derivative at x that's going to turn out to be negative five times four times three times two times one x to the negative sixth. And the reason why I'm not multiplying these things out, notice you're getting five times four times three times two. The next one will be six times five times four times three times two. We can write that more compactly using this factorial notation. And if I had multiplied all this out, um, you know, unless you know what f that 5 factorial is 120, um, you probably, there's a good chance you wouldn't recognize it. So I know I probably wouldn't, so that's why I don't write them down. All right, so now we're going to go back and we're going to start evaluating our derivatives and our original function at this value a equals 2. So f of 2 is just simply going to give us the natural logarithm of 2. f prime of 2, that's going to give us, looks like, I'm going to write that as 1 over 2. f double prime of 2, if I plug that in, I'm now going to get negative 1, and I'll get 1 over 2 squared. f triple prime of 2, that's going to give me 2 times, well, 1 over 2 cubed. And I'm going to keep writing these. Maybe I'll jump down to the sixth derivative, just so I don't run out of time here. Um, it looks like I get negative 5 times 4 times 3 times 2, so negative 5 factorial. And let's see, sorry, I was thinking there for a second. And then we have 1 over 2 raised to the sixth power. Okay, so it looks like we have a nice little relationship forming. When I'm at the nth derivative, the sixth derivative in this case, I'm at one smaller factorial, and again the negative doesn't apply to the the five. I'm at one smaller factorial. I have that many powers of one over n, and it looks like the signs are oscillating. When I'm at even derivatives, I'm getting negative numbers. When I'm at odd derivatives, I'm getting positive numbers. So what this simply says is we can now actually write ln of x as, well, f of a, which is going to be ln of 2. So compare this to the formula I had at the very beginning. Plus, you'll have 1 half x minus a, which in this case is 2, over 1 factorial, plus f double prime of a. So that's going to be negative 1 times 1 half squared and then we write x minus a which again is 2 and in this case it'll be to the second power over 2 factorial so let me squeeze in a couple others here um, so then we'll be at f triple prime so that'll be 
2 times 1 over 3 cubed, x minus a, which is 2 cubed over 3 factorial. And then this pattern continues. Maybe I'll write my f to the 6th power of n. It says you get negative 5 factorial, 1 over 2 to the 6th power, and then we have, it'll be x minus a, which is going to be 2 to the 6th power over 6 factorial, and again this pattern just keeps continuing on indefinitely. So a little confusing, but again all I'm doing is taking derivatives, evaluating the function, plugging it in, and then I've got my x minus a's to powers. So let's see if we can't rewrite this a little more compactly. It looks like the ln of 2 doesn't really fit into this pattern, so I'm just going to pull that part out front, and then I'm going to try to rewrite this with a summation from 1 to infinity. Okay, so it looks like I've got this, uh, it looks like definitely signs are alternating, and if I plug in n equals 1, I'm going to want to get this first term, because I've already taken care of the, n, the ln of 2. Um, so the whole first term. And it looks like the first one is positive, so maybe I should plug on like an n plus 1. That'll make the first term positive. All right, then after that it looks like we have, we've got powers of 1 half in there. And every time I have 1 half, and whatever term I'm at, that's how many 1 over n's I have. So I'll have 1 over 2 to the n power. And then it looks like I've got, well, x minus 2 to the n power. And then in the, let's see, in the denominator, if I'm at the nth derivative, I'm at that same thing, factorial. But I don't want to forget about my factorials out front either. So it looks like whatever's, when I'm at the nth derivative, I'm at one smaller factorial. Okay, so a little, a little tricky here. Um, and I'm going to rewrite this one more time just to clean it up so you can check all my arithmetic here. I don't think I've done anything too terribly crazy. Um, and sometimes, you know, this is the hard part. So again, I'm trying to go through it a little quick here just to, uh, just so I don't run out of time. So let's see. I could write n minus 1 factorial over n factorial that actually just simplifies down to n. You can write that out and play with factorials and convince yourself of that. It looks like I've got an x minus 2 to the n power on top. Well, I'm going to simplify my 1 half to the n. 1 to the n is 1. 2 to the n is 2 to the n. So I think this would be a more compact way of writing it. ln of 2 plus the summation from 1 to infinity. You have your negative 1 to the n plus first power. And then in the numerator, I'm going to have x minus 2 to the n power. And then in the denominator, I'll have 2 to the n times n. Okay, so this is something just uh, really illustrating how you can rewrite things more compactly. Um, a nice generic formula. You know, if, if your teacher didn't make you, I would probably try to avoid these last two steps and just show them, hey, I, I, I see the pattern, I see what's going on, um, I got it. Um, but, whoops, and I wrote, I gotta be careful, I wrote a 1 over 3 here, this should be a 1 over 2 to the third power. I did the same thing up here, no wonder. Okay, so, sorry about that little mistake, these should all be 1 over 2 to the ends, um, but hopefully that didn't throw you off too bad, so if you're wondering where that 1 third came from, I apologize. Um, kinda eyeballing it here, I think everything else looks okay. So. If you want to see a more straightforward example, uh, in that case using a Maclaurin series, feel free to take a look at my website. I also have that example posted here on YouTube. Um, if you have any questions about this stuff, send me an email. I'll be happy to do some more examples or try to answer your questions. Again, this stuff, um, just the, the arithmetic can be pretty tedious, so um, just be a good, a good bookkeeper and um, hopefully you won't make too many mistakes.